uh, this past couple of months um, have made me need to talk to you guys about math teachers and how we can be the key to ending racism. Um, more than the past couple of months, but it's just a national teachable moment right now. The first place I want to look at is in math class. There are so many stereotypes that come with our subject. People think it was invented by Europeans, and it's about manipulating numbers in magical ways, and if you can do it, you're smart, and if you can't, you're not. And the truth about math is that every single culture uses mathematical thinking. Everyone already does math, and what counts as good math has to do with who you're doing it with and why. It's not a marker of intelligence. It's something you get better at by doing it with people. And the reason that matters is because um, we have decided that some groups of people are good at math and some groups are bad at math. And then we use math as a gatekeeper for college and career. And so if we can break those math stereotypes, we can actually open up gates. One way that math teachers can change that equation is to make sure that you listen to students of color and position their ideas as leaders in your math classroom. And if your class doesn't have students of color, you can find classes that do and make pen pals and connect through the internet. You can also teach your students to be mathropologists, to find the way that math is happening already in their community, and to learn to make those connections to school math, but be critical about those connections. What are the ways that the math we're doing is and isn't represented at school? But this part is even way more fun, is that mathematics teachers actually hold one of the biggest keys to changing everyone's perceptions about stereotypes and racism, which is why we need to talk about racism in math classes, whether it's white teachers and white students and students of color. Um, cultural racism is the kind of racism I'm talking about. It's the kind that Dr. Tatum says is like a smog. We all live in a racist society with racist media and racist ideas. Every time we breathe, we're breathing that in. We don't mean to do it, but we do. There's a website, understandingprejudice.org. You can actually take a test, a psychological test of your unconscious bias. So I did it in preparation for this talk. That's my result. I have a moderate automatic preference for European Americans compared to African Americans, which is scary because when I work with with people who are people of color and I have to make split-second decisions about how to treat them and how to interact with them, my brain is not helping. My brain is feeding back that smog that I've been breathing my whole life. And so I might affect someone in a way I don't need, mean to, but I'm a math teacher. I know what to do when my brain makes mistakes because I'm not thinking. These are three math mistakes that I have made in the past 72 hours. They're <laughs> There are a lot more racism mistakes that I've made in the past 72 hours, but in both cases, I know what to do because I'm a math teacher. You slow down, you check your work, you understand the concepts, and you practice so you get better at it. We can practice mathematical concepts that actually help us check that smog, be like a smog filter. The two mathematical concepts I think will undo racism are proportional reasoning and statistical literacy. If we can get good at that and apply that to racism, we can go a long way towards not making that automatic first gesture. So when we hear someone on the radio say, well, more white people than black people are victims of deadly police shootings, and they want us to think, oh, that means there's no racism when somebody gets shot by the police who's a person of color. We can think, wait a minute, proportional reasoning. If you think about the number of black people in this country compared to the number of white people, and you know about proportional reasoning, you can ask questions like, what's the rate at which people of color are killed during uh, police arrests? How many times more likely? Um, so can your students think about data about race and come up with uh, calculations like they did on the Vox website to be able to think about how many times more likely can they make that come to life for them um, through proportional reasoning. If you are going to bring data about race into your classroom, I think there's a really important sociological point you also have to make though, which is if we say that we're measuring race, what we're actually measuring is the effects of racism. As a biological construct, race isn't really real. So what you're measuring when you look at how people of color and white people compare is how racism has affected people. So if you hear that racial groups score lower on the SATs, what you're learning about is that racism, through things like stereotype threat, has affected folks. So train students to ask, does this anecdote represent actual data? Is this outcome disproportionate? Could this outcome be due to racism? And you're building them a mathematical smog filter that can help them stop their automatic judgments and stereotypes. The death of Mike Brown is not redeemable, but through bringing it into the classroom, we might be able to restore a little bit of our humanity together. Thank you.